Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube station and we're here to bring you Game 2 of the 1962 New York Mets versus the 1998 New York Yankees. Best out of 7, the 62 Mets shocked the 98 Yankees in Game 1 with the victory led by the pitcher Al Jackson and are trying to repeat the performance. The 1998 Yankees are looking for revenge in Game 2 and to even up this best of seven series. So let's quickly get into the game here. Hope everyone's doing well on this rainy evening and windy East Coast of the United States of Massachusetts. The Red Sox game got canceled. So, we're going to play our own little baseball game today in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. Leading off for the 1962 New York Mets, Rod Cannell. And he's playing shortstop. Batting second, the designated hitter, Richie Ashbury. Batting third and playing left field, Frank J. Thomas. Batting fourth and playing third base, Felix Mantilla. What a stellar game he had defensively in game one. Batting fifth and playing first base, Marv Throneberry. Batting sixth and playing center field, Jim L. Hickman. Batting 7th and playing 2nd base, Charlie Neal. Batting 8th and playing right field, Joe Christopher. And doing the catching and batting ninth, Hobie Landreth. Now for the Yankees defensive lineman and pitching. Pitching for the 1998 New York Yankees, the left-handed, left-hander, excuse me, David Wells. In 1998, Wells won 18 wins and 4 losses, walked 29, and struck out 163 with an ERA of 3.49. Wells throws strikes. The Mets once again have to be, be prepared to swing away. His battery mate is the catcher, Jorge Posada. Defense of 8, arm of 7. Very good. Again, the ratings for the baseball players, one, well, 0 through 10. 0 and 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest. The 1998 Yankees have a solid infield and outfield playing third base. Scott Brocious has a defensive rating of a 6, which is good. Derek Jeter, the captain's at shortstop, defensive rating of an 8, which is very good. Chuck Knobloch is playing second base, defensive rating of 7, again, very good. And Tino Martinez rounds out the infield at first base with a defensive rate, rating of 7. Again, very good, solid infield by the 98 Yankees. Their outfield's even better. In left, Chad Curtis. Defense of 8, arm of 9. Outstanding. In center field, Bernie Williams. Defense of 9, arm of 7. Outstanding. And the intense one in right field, Paul O'Neill. Defensive rating is 8, arm of 10. It's a very... As good as the infield is for the 98 Yankees, their outfield is even better. So leading off, for the 1962 Mets, who lost 140 games in 1962. 140 games. The worst team in Major League Baseball history. Where the Yankees won 114 games, I believe, in 1998. One of the best teams ever. So leading off and trying to keep this... Uh, Mojo and upset streak going for the New York Mets. The shortstop, Rod Cannell. 
He's a right-handed pull hitter. He was 0 for 3 yesterday. In 1962, he had 248, four home runs, and 27 RBIs. Against left-handed pitching, contact of six, which is good. Power of three, which is poor. Eye of four, which is below average. David Wells throws strikes. The Yankee infield and outfield straight away and normal. And we're ready to get game two going. Canel will be swinging away. Posada flashes the sign. Wells sets and delivers to Canel. And that ball is ripped down to third base. Brocious throws over to Tino Martinez. He makes a fine defensive play. One away. The left-handed pull hitter for the 62 Mets, Richie Ashburn, steps to the plate. He was one for four in game one with an RBI. In 1962, Richie Ashburn, at the age of 35, hit 306, seven home runs, and 28 RBIs. Against left-handed pitching, his numbers drop slightly. They go from contact of 9 to 8, power from 4 to 3, and I from 9 to 7. Still very solid hitting numbers for Richie Ashburn, a designated hitter. Yankees infield and outfield straight away and normal. Wells will deliver to Richie Ashburn. He'll be taking. Ball one inside. Off-speed pitch. Wells will be taking again. Posada flashes a sign. Wells delivers to Ashburn. Outside with that fastball. 2-0. and oh. Wells will be taking again. The windup and the pitch to Richie Ashburn. That catches the outside corner. So that fastball is a strike. Two balls, one strike. Richie Ashburn will be swinging away. Wells in the windup, and here's the pitch to Richie. Richie swings, and that ball is up the middle. And that's a one-out single. Fine piece of hitting by Richie Ashburn. Ashburn is at first. His speed number is 5, which is average. His stealing is 7, which is good. Now stepping to the plate, Frank J. Thomas. Posada's arm behind the plate is a 7. Thomas... In game one, went two for three with two RBIs. In 1962, Thomas hit 266, 34 home runs, 94 RBIs. As I said in game one, the Mets will have to do damage with their top four to five hitters. Against left-handed pitching, Thomas contact a seven, which is good. Power of 9, which is excellent. Eye of 5, which is average. Ashburn's at first. Thomas will be taking. Wells sets and delivers to Frank J. Thomas. Strike 1. That fastball gets over. So 0-1 count. Thomas is a right-handed pull hitter. Yankees infield and outfield straight away and normal. He'll be swinging away. Here's the windup and the pitch to Thomas. And he swings it. That ball is driven deep, and that's out of here, folks. The New York Mets of 62 once again shocked the Yankees early. A two-run homer by Frank J. Thomas as he deposited that David Wells pitch into the left field stands. And my God, Yankee Stadium has gotten quiet quite quickly. A bomb by Frank J. Thomas. 462 feet. The Mets grab a 2-0 lead here in Game 2. As he crushed that fastball. Now up for the Mets. Felix Matia, who played a stellar defensive third base in Game 1. Matia was 1 for 4 with 2 RBIs. 
In 1962, Mantia hit 275, 11 home runs, and 59 RBIs. Mantia has a connect against left-handed pitching of 7, power and eye of 5. Posada has a word with Wells, now it goes back behind the plate. Mantia will be taking. He is a right-handed normal hitter. Yankees infield and outfield straight away in normal. Wells winds and delivers to Mantia. Ball one inside with that fastball. Mantia will be swinging away. Posada flashes the sign. Here's the pitch to Mantia. And Mantia sends that ball into left center for a single. So that's a third consecutive hit that Wells has given up. Mantia's speed is poor at two. Stealing ability is very good at seven, though. Once again, Posada's arm is a seven. Now stepping to the plate for the 62 Mets, Marv Throneberry. He's a left-handed normal hitter. Yankees infield outfield continues to be straight away in normal. Throneberry went 0 for 4 in Game 1. And in 1962, Throneberry hit 244, 16 home runs, and 49 RBIs. Against left-handed pitching, Throneberry has contact of 5, power of 6, eye of 5. So he's pretty much an average hitter there with above-average power. He'll be taking. Well sets and delivers. But he throws over before he goes to the plate. And Matias back. So they're thinking maybe a hit and run is going to be on. Posada flashes a sign. Wells looks over at Mantia. Here's the pitch of Throneberry. He's swinging away. And he strikes out on the 1-2 count. That's out number two. Jim Hickman steps to the plate. Hickman's a right-handed normal hitter. Went two for four in game one. And in 1962 for the New York Mets, hit 245, 13 home runs, 46 RBIs. Against left handed pitching, contact of six, power of seven, eye of seven. Good numbers there for Hickman. They'll be taking on the first pitch. Well sets and delivers. Ball one with that fastball inside. So one ball, no strikes. Felix Mantia at first. Speed of two. Stealing ability of seven. Hickman will be taking again. Posada flashes the sign. Here's the pitch to Hickman. Ball two. Posada wasn't happy with that call. He looks back at the umpire. Is that fastball missed inside? So two balls, no strikes on Hickman. He'll be taking for a third time. Well sets and delivers. Ball three inside. 3-0 count. Hickman's going to have the green light here. As on deck is Charlie Neal. You know what? Hickman's going to take, actually. Well sets and delivers. Strike one. That fastball gets the corner. Three balls. One strike. Hickman will be swinging away. Posada flashes the sign. Here comes the pitch into Hickman. Hickman swings over to Jeter, who goes to Tino Martinez, inning over. But the 1962 New York Mets jump out to a 2-0 lead on the Thomas home run. A bomb to dead left. We go to the bottom of the first. Leading off for the 1998 juggernaut. New York Yankees, the captain, Derek Jeter, and he's playing shortstop. Batting second, the third baseman, Scott Brocious. Batting third, the center fielder, Bernie Williams. Batting fourth, the intense one, and Paul O'Neill playing right field. Batting fifth, Tino Martinez playing first base. Batting sixth, and doing the catching, Jorge Posada. Batting 7th, playing 2nd base, Chuck Knobloch. Batting 8th, and the, doing the designated hitting, 
the ageless one, the 39-year-old Tim Raines, who looks fabulous. And batting ninth, playing left field, Chad Curtis. So Jeter steps into the batter's box. He is a right-handed, normal hitter. The Mets infield, outfield, straightaway, and normal. The defensive alignment for the New York Mets. Pitching, Roger Craig. In 1962, Roger Craig went 10 wins, 24 losses. Walked 70, struck out 118, ERA of 4.51. His battery mate, the catcher, Hobie Landreth. Defensive ability of 6, arm of 6. So he's an above average catcher. At third base, Felix Mantilla. He had a stellar game one as he vacuumed everything up and threw it over to first. He made some fabulous diving plays. He channeled his inner Brooks Robinson. He has defensive six. It's above average. At shortstop, Rod Cannell. Defensive five. That's average. At second base, Charlie Neal. Defensive six. That's above average. And at first base, Marv Throneberry. Defensive five. That is average. In the outfield, the Mets outfield is actually quite good, to be honest with you, defensively. You have Frank Thomas in left. You hit the home run. In the top of the first. Defense of seven. Arm of ten. Very good. Hickman, who robbed Jeter of extra bases in game one with a fine running catch to dead center. Is their center fielder. Defense of seven. Arm of eight. Good. And in right field, Joe Christopher. Defense of seven. Arm of nine. Again, that's a very solid, good outfield for the 62 Mets. Jeter is at the plate, right-handed, normal hitter. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway, and normal. Roger Craig sets and delivers to Derek Jeter. Jeter sends that ball in the right field. Christopher charging hard, but he won't get to it. That is going to be a single for Derek Jeter. Jeter has good speed. At six, and very good stealing ability at eight. Hobie Landreth, who they did steal a few bases on in game one, on his catcher's arm is six. So advantage Derek Jeter. Craig is going to have to look to hold on Derek Jeter here. Now batting Scott Brocious. In game one, he was 0 for 4. Brocious has, against right-handed pitching, contact of eight. Power of six, eye of six. In 1998, Grocious hit 319 home runs and 98 RBIs. He is a right handed normal hitter. Roger Craig against right handed batters. He has stuff of five, which is average, movement of six, which is slightly above average, and control of seven, which is good. His stamina is nine. So that's going to be about. I'm going to say he's going to be able to throw approximately probably 115 to 120 pitches. The Mets infield will move into double play depth. Craig throws over to first. And Jeter just gets back. Thought we had him for a second. So Craig will pitch out of the hold position. He sets and delivers to Brocious. Brocious grounds it to short. Only plays the first. So that goes six to three. Cheater advances to second. So that went Cannell to Throneberry. And Cheater's at second on the fielder's choice. Now batting Bernie Williams. Went two for five in game one. In 1998, Williams hit. 339, 26 home runs, 97 RBIs. Unbelievable. Such an outstanding lineup here. Williams is a switch hitter. He'll be batting lefty against the right-handed pitching Craig. Against right-handed pitching, he has a contact of 10, which is outstanding. Power of 8, eye of 7. Williams is an excellent hitter. Once again, the ratings go... One, uh, 0 through 10. 10 being the best, 1 being the worst. 
Blue numbers are excellent. Green numbers are good to very good. Yellow are good to average. Orange below average and red is poor. So Jeter's at second base with good speed, good running ability. Williams is at the plate against left-handed batters. Craig's stuff is five, movement five, again average. Control is seven, above average. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. Landreth flashes a sign. Craig sets and delivers to Williams. And he strikes him out on the one-two count swinging. So there's two away. Jeter's still at second. Stepping to the plate. The right fielder, the very intense Paul O'Neill. He went one for four in game one. And in 1998... He hit 317, 24 home runs, and 116 RBI. Against right-handed pitching, this left-handed batter has contact of 9, power of 7, eye of 6. Very good numbers there. O'Neill is a left-handed spray hitter. So two outs, Jeter is at second. O'Neill looking to knock him in. A base hit most likely will score Derek Cheater. Mets infield and outfield are straight away and normal. Craig winds and delivers to Paul O'Neill. And that ball is ripped down the line. Christopher comes in, makes the play at the plate, and he throws him out. Unbelievable! Christopher guns out Derek Jeter at the plate. And the miracles continue to happen for the 62 Mets. As the Mets fans in the stands cheer. Unbelievable. Wow. We go to the top of the second and the Mets continue to hold a 2-0 lead. A fine throw by Joe Christopher from right field. Leading off this inning for the 62 Mets, Charlie Neal, the Mets' second baseman. One for four in game one. And in 1962, he hit 260. 11 home runs and 58 RBI. That's left-handed pitching. His numbers for contact goes up from six to seven. Power and I stay the same, five and six. So he's... Uh, a solid hitter, right-handed pull hitter, Yankees infield and outfield straight away and normal. Well sets and delivers, Neal will be taking. Ball one as he misses outside with that fastball. Neal will take again, Posada flashes, Wells nods, winds and delivers, strike one, that fastball's over. One ball, one strike. Neil will be swinging away. He awaits the delivery from Wells. Wells sets and delivers to Charlie Neal. Neal rips that ball deep to center field. And it's over Bernie Williams' head. That's going to be two. No, it's going to be a triple. As Neal, wow, the Mets just continue to batter Yankee pitching today. As that's a leadoff triple. As he burnt Bernie Williams a dead center. Now up Joe Christopher. Opportunity to knock in a run here. And these runs are very important for the 62 Mets. Christopher went 0 for 4 in game 1. And in 1962, he hit 244. 6 home runs and 32 RBIs. Against left-handed pitching. Contact 5, power 5, I of 6. All yellow numbers. So that's a solid, he's a solid hitter. He's a right-handed pull hitter. Once again, David Wells, you can see over here, against right-handed batters, stuff of six, movement of six, control of nine. Though he has had issues with his control. And the Mets batters have been disciplined not to chase out of the strike zone early in this game. 
Wells has a stamina of 10, which is good for probably 130 pitches. So Christopher's up. Neil is at third. Speed of three, which is poor. Stealing ability of five, but he's not going to be stealing home. Joe Christopher will take the first pitch. Wells sets and delivers. Ball one. That off-speed pitch does not find the strike zone. The Mets batters are staying very disciplined, staying to the game plan. They'll be taking again. Posada flashes a sign. Here's the wind-up and the pitcher, Joe Christopher. Strike one. That fastball finds the strike zone. 1-1 one, one count here. Christopher would like to get at least something deep in the air to get this run in. Again, the Yankee outfield it. Very good arms. It's going to have to take a deep fly ball. Christopher will be swinging away. Here's the wind-up and the pitch by David Wells. And Christopher strikes out on the 1-2 count. One away. Now stepping to the plate, the catcher, Hobie Landreth. He was 0 for 2 in game 1. And in 1962, he had 222, four home runs, and 17 RBIs. Against left-handed pitching, contact of four, which is poor. Power, and eye of five, which is average. He's a left-handed normal hitter. Wells against left-handed batters, stuff of six, and that's just how well he throws his pitches. Movement of six, obviously self-explanatory. The movement on his pitches, how well they move. And control of nine, which is excellent. He can hit his spots. He's been trying to get the Mets batters to chase. They have not. Landreth is a five for a bunt hit. And a sacrifice bunt of one. On deck is the leadoff hitter, Rod Cannell. At third base... Charlie Neal. Lantreth will be taking. Posada flashes a sign. Wells delivers the pitch. Outside. That almost looked like they pitched out there looking for a squeeze play. One ball. No strikes. He'll be taking again. Here's the pitch. Oh, that, that fastball catches the outside corner. 1-1. One, one. It's a 1-1 one, one count. With Cannell on deck. Hobie Lantreth will be swinging away. Well sets and delivers to the Met catcher. Strike and he three. strikes him out in the 2-2 two -two count swinging. So now it's going to take a base hit to score uh, Neil, who's at third. The Mets don't want to squander this opportunity to get a third run in here in the top of the second. Rod Cannell steps to the plate in the series. He's 0 for 5. 0 for 1 today. Right-handed pull hitter, contact of six, power of three, eye of four. He'll be taking that first pitch once again. Well sets and delivers to Cannell. Strike one. Off-speed pitch hits the outside corner. 0-1 count. Cannell will be swinging away. Again, he's going to need a hit to get Charlie Neal in from third. Neal led off the inning with a triple. Let's see if Wells can pitch out of this jam. Sada flashes a sign. Canelo awaits the pitch from Wells. Here's the windup and the pitch. And that's ripped down to third and past Brocious. That's going to be a double. Yes, a double for Canelo as he slides in safely. The 62 Mets take a 3-0 lead, a clutch hit for Rod Canelo. As Brocious dove for the ball, but it got past him and down the left field line it went. So there's another duck out there for the 62 Mets at second base. Cannell has good speed of 7. Excellent stealing ability at 8. Now up the dangerous Richie Ashburn. Ashburn is 2 for 5 in the series with an RBI. 1 for 1 today. He scored a run on the Thomas home run. Ashburn against left-handed pitching. Contact of 8. Power of three, I of seven. He is a left-handed pull hitter. Ashburn will be swinging away. Here's the windup and the pitch to Richie Ashburn. Ashburn swings, sends that ball out to right center. O'Neal makes the catch to end the inning.
But the Mets score once again and now take a 3-0 lead into the bottom of the second. Leading off the bottom of the second for the Yankees, Tino Martinez. He was 0 for 3 in game 1 in 1998. Tino Martinez at 281, 28 home runs, 123 RBIs. Against left against right-handed pitching, I'm sorry. Contact is 7. Power of 8. Eye of 7. Very good hitter, Tino Martinez is. Again, off left-handers. Craig, stuff of 5. Movement of 6. Control of 7. Tino is a left-handed normal hitter. Yank, uh, Mets infield and outfield straight away in normal. Craig sets and delivers to Martinez. That ball is grounded to the first baseman who throws it over to Craig covering. So that went thrown Barry to Craig. And that is one away. Now stepping to the plate. Now stepping to the plate. Catcher Jorge Posada. He was 0 for 2 in game 1. And in 1998, Jorge hit 268, 17 home runs, and 63 RBIs. Left-handed normal hitter. Against right-handed pitching, contact to 7, power of 8, eye of 7. Very solid, good batting numbers there. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. There's one out. Landreth flashes the sign. Craig nods his head. He sets and delivers to the Yankee catcher. And that ball is grounded. Oh, it's a pop-up. Caught by the second baseman. And that's out number two. The graphics fooled me there a bit. So Neal catches the pop-up. Now batting with two outs. Chuck Knobloch, the Yankee second baseman. Right-handed normal hitter. He was two for three in game one. Again, it's right-handed pitching, contact of six, power of six, eye of seven. Solid offensive batting numbers there for Knobloch. Against right-handed batters, Craig's numbers stay the same. Five, six, seven. Mets infield and outfield straight away and normal. There's two outs. Knobloch's looking to start something with two outs. Craig sets and delivers to Knobloch. And he hits him! He came high and tight. And he hit him. I don't know if they did. I don't think that was intentional. As Knobloch has excellent speed and base running ability. Tim Rain steps to the plate. Reigns was 0 for 4 in game 1, and in 1998, Reigns hit 290, 5 home runs, and 47 RBIs against right handed pitching. Reigns, a switch hitter, is batting left handed, has contact of 8, power of 4, eye of 8. Solid numbers again here. The Yankees have a very good lineup. Left handed spray hitter. The Mets infield and outfield. Well, the infield actually is going to go to move to guard the lines right here with two outs. Outfield base straightaway and normal. Craig sets and delivers to Tim Raines. And he walked him on the 3 2 count. So the tying run steps to the plate. And Chad Curtis, the Yankee left fielder, two for four in game one with an RBI. Right-handed pull hitter in 1998 hit 243, 10 home runs with 56 RBIs. Against right-handed pitching, contact of five, which is average, power of four, which is just below average, eye of eight, which is very good. The Mets infield will shift left.
Outfield straight away in normal. Here's the windup and the pitch to Curtis. Curtis swings. That goes a short. Oh, it's an error! E6, bad throw by Cannell. Craig should be out of the inning, but now bases are loaded. And the captain, Derek Jeter, comes to the plate for the 98 Yankees. Big moment here in game two. 62 Mets leading the 98 Yankees 3 to nothing. As Cannell, a botched throw to Neal. They should have been out of the inning. Jeter has to make them pay for it. Jeter's one for one today, one for six in the series. Right-handed normal hitter against right-handed pitching. Contact of nine, power of six, eye of six. Mets infield now feels straight away in normal. Bases are loaded, no place to put Jared, Derek Jeter. Craig sets and delivers to the Yankee captain. And that ball is ripped deep. And that ball is gone inside the left field foul pole. That is a grand slam for Derek Jeter. And with one swing of the bat, the 98 Yankees show their true colors and take the lead at 4-3. to three. Wow, that error killed the Mets that inning. Grand slam, Derek Jeter. The Mets take the lead. Uh, the Yankees take the lead four to three with two outs. A clutch hit by the Yankee captain. High fives all over in that Yankee dugout. Cannell's just hanging his head at short, knowing that they should have been out of the inning. Craig's a little disgusted, but he's got to get over that. Hobie Landreth goes out to the mound and talks to him. As. Jeter destroyed that pitch. It just got inside the left field foul pole for a grand slam and a Yankee lead. Now batting and trying to keep this Yankee magic going, Scott Brocious, third baseman. Brocious is 0 for 5 in the series, 0 for 1 today. Against right-handed pitching, contact of 8, power of 6, eye of 6. Good, solid offensive batting numbers there. Right-handed normal hitter. Mets infield, outfield, straight away in normal. Craig winds and delivers to Brocious. That ball is popped up. Who's calling for it? Cannell calls off the third baseman, makes the catch, inning over. But damage is done uh, after the Cannell error. The captain, Derek Jeter, for the 98 Yankees, hits a grand slam, and they take the lead over the 62 Mets by one. Four to three as we go to the top of the third. At the plate, the man who homered in the first for the Mets, Frank J. Thomas. Thomas, three for four in the series, one home run, four RBIs, one for one today, home run, two RBIs. That's left-handed pitching contact to seven. Power of 9, which is excellent. I of 5, very solid, good batting numbers there for Frank J. Thomas. Wells has struggled in the first two innings. Let's see if he can change that in inning number 3. Thomas will be taking. Here's the windup and the pitch by Wells. Inside for ball 1. Thomas will be swinging away now. Posada flashes the sign. The wind and delivery to Frank J. Thomas. Thomas swings. That goes to Jeter, who throws over to Martinez. One away. Now up, Felix Mantilla. One for one today. Two for five in the series. Two RBIs. That's left-handed pitching. Contact to seven. Power of five. Eye of five. Mantilla will be swinging away against Wells. The wind up and the pitch to Mantilla. And that ball is sent to Jeter, who quickly throws to Martinez, out number two, as the captain gets a huge round of applause from the Yankee faithful here in the Bronx. So with two outs, no one on. Stepping to the plate, the left-handed normal hitter, Marv Throneberry, the Mets' first baseman. 0 for 5 in the series, 0 for 1 today. Contact of 5. Power of six, eye of five. He'll be swinging away. Well sets and delivers to Throneberry. 
Thronberry grounds it to second. That's going to go four to three. Inning over. Now black to Martinez. One, two, three inning for David Wells. We go to the bottom of the third. Yankees leading four to three. Leading off in the bottom of the third. Yankee center fielder Bernie Williams. Two for six in the series. No RBIs. No home runs. 0 for one today. Contact of 10. Power of 8. Eye of 7. Left-handed normal hitter. He's a switch hitter. He's batting left-handed against the right-handed pitching Roger Craig. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. Landreth flashes a sign. Here's the windup and pitch by Craig. Williams swings, sends that ball to right field. Christopher comes in hard and makes the fine catch there for out number one. So with one out, the intense one, the right fielder, Paul O'Neill, comes to the plate. He is two for five for the series. No home runs, no RBIs. One for one. He singled into right in the first inning. Jeter tried to come around and score, but was gunned down at the plate by Joe Christopher, ending the inning. O'Neill's a left-handed spray hitter. Contact of 9, which is excellent. Power of 7, which is very good. Eye of 6, which is good. Craig sets and delivers to O'Neill. And he strikes him out, swinging on the 1-2 count. So there's two outs. Tino Martinez steps to the plate. 0 for 4 in the series, 0 for 1 today. Contact 7, power of 8. I have seven. Very good offensive batting numbers there. He hasn't shown anything for it yet in the series. But at any moment can break out. Craig really wants to get this third out here. Here's the windup and the pitch by Roger Craig. And that ball sent to center field. And that's going to get down and get to the wall. And Martinez has himself a double. So a two-out double for Tino Martinez as he gets his first hit of the series here in Game 2. Jorge Posada steps to the plate. 0 for 3 in the series, 0 for 1 today. Left-handed normal hitter. Contact of 7, power of 8, eye of 7. Again, very good offensive batting numbers here for the Yankee catcher. He has an RBI out there in Tino Martinez at second. Martinez is very slow. Speed of 2. Stealing ability of six, so he's a pretty decent base runner. But the Mets have very good arms in the outfield. Here's the windup and the pitch to Posada. And that ball is ripped in the left center. Here comes the throw at the plate, and he is safe. He beats the throw. Posada has an RBI single. The 1998 New York Yankees take a 5 3 lead. As Martinez scored from second base, Hickman's throw was late to the plate. Chuck Knobloch steps to the plate. Knobloch, 2 for 3 in the series. 0 for 0 today. I believe he was hit by a pitch. I guess he was. If memory serves me correct. He is a right-handed normal hitter. Posada at first. Again, not winning the race against the Tortoise. Speed of one. Stealing ability of two. Knobloch contact to six. Power of six. I of seven. Good solid offensive numbers there for the batter. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. Craig is now up to 49 pitches. Landreth has a word with him. Now comes back behind the plate. Here's the windup and the pitch to Chuck Knobloch. And Knobloch sends it down to third. Matia throws it over to second to Neal. Inning over, but damage done. The Yankees tack on another run and now have extended their lead to two runs. Five to three over the 62 Mets. We go to the top of the fourth. Leading off the top of the fourth, the Mets center fielder, Jim L. Hickman. Hickman is two for five in the series, 0 for one today. Contact of six, power of seven, eye of seven against left-handed pitching. 
So those are solid offensive batting numbers there. He'll be taking. Well sets and delivers to Hickman. Outside. Missed badly. Ball one. Wells has struggled with his control. And also the Mets batters have been very disciplined at the plate, not the swing. At balls that are just outside the strike zone. Hickman will take once again. Here's the pitch to Hickman. Inside. Ball two. Wells gets the sign from Posada. Here's the pitch to Hickman. Ball three. That was low and away. 3-0 count. Hickman will be taking all the way. Here's the pitch. Ball four. Four straight balls. So a leadoff walk by Jim Hickman. Charlie Neal steps to the plate. He's two for five in the series. One for one today. He had a leadoff triple, but the Mets stranded him at third as they could not score Neal from third base. And boy, wouldn't they like to have that run back. A, a chance to knock that run in. And also another killer for the Mets were in the bottom of the second. They should have been out of the inning. Shortstop Rod Cannell boots up, makes a bad throw to second. Next batter, the base is loaded. Derek Jeter homers. So, Hickman's at first. Speed of three, which is not good. Stealing ability of five, which is average. Charlie Neal's at the plate. Against left-handed pitching. Contact of seven, which is good. Power of five, which is average. I of six, which is slightly above average. Neal will be taking. Well sets and delivers to the Mets' second baseman. Strike one. Gets the outside corner there on that pitch. No balls. Two strikes. Mets are going to play hit and run. Here's the pitch. Balls grounded to Jeter, who has to go to first. One away. But hit me and advances to second. So the Mets have a runner in scoring position. Joe Christopher comes up to the plate. He threw out Derek Jeter in the first inning at the plate to end that inning. Let's see if he can do something with the bat here. 0 for 5, 0 for 1 today. Contact and power of 5, eye of 6. Those are solid. Just, he's an average hitter, right-handed pull hitter. He'll be taking. Well sets and delivers to Christopher. Strike one. No, I'm sorry. Ball one. So once again, Wells struggling to get that first strike over. The Mets are being very disciplined at the plate. Jim Hickman at second speed of three, which is poor. Stealing ability of five, so he's not a horrible base runner. He just doesn't have speed. One ball, no strikes to the right-handed pull hitter. Yankees infield, outfield straight away. He's going to be swinging away. Here's the pitch to Christopher. Sends that down to Jeter. Goes in the hole and throws out Christopher. A fine play by Derek Jeter. He's been outstanding at the bat and in the field so far. Two outs. He's up to Hobie Landreth. The Met catcher is 0 for 3 in the series. 0 for 1 today. Contact of 4, which is poor. Power and eye of 5, which is average. You know what? He'll be taking. Wells delivers. Ball one. The Met catcher will be taking again. Posada flashes his sign. Wells winds and delivers. Ball two. So two balls, no strikes. Two outs. Hickman at second. Landreth will be taking. Strike one. That off-speed pitch gets over. So 2-1 count. Landreth looks down at the third base coach. Gets back in the box. He'll be swinging away. Well sets and delivers to Hobie Landreth. And he sends that ball out in the center field. Williams coming on hard, and he makes the catch for the third and final out of the top of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The 1962 Mets 3, the 1998 Yankees 5. Leading off for the 98 Yankees, Tim Raines 0 for 4 in the series. He walked his first time up in this game. Against right-handed pitching contact of 8, power of 4, eye of 8. So contact and eye numbers are very good. Power is below average. 
He's a switch hitter. He's batting lefty, and he's a spray hitter. The Mets infield and outfield straight away and normal. Landreth goes through the signs. Roger Crick nods his head. He sets and delivers to Reigns. That ball is sent out in the left center and will drop in for a hit. A leadoff single for Tim Reigns. He has speed of five, which is average. Stealing ability of eight, which is very good. He is a threat to run, and the Yankees have run on um, Hobie Landreth's arm in the series so far. Now batting Chad Curtis, the Yankee left fielder. Two for five in the series from RBI. 0 for 1 today. Contact of 5. Power of 4. Eye of 8. He is a pull hitter. The Mets infield will shift left. Craig throws over to first. Reigns back. It's a pitch out. Reigns isn't going anywhere. Craig will pitch from the hold position. He sets and delivers to Chad Curtis. Curtis grounds it to short. It's going to be a double play. Six to four to three. Cannell to Neal to Throneberry. Two for one. So there's two outs now, and the captain, Derek Jeter, comes up, and he's having a stellar day at the plate. Two for two. One home run. Four RBIs off. That's that grand slam in the bottom of the second, and he's playing a stellar defense so far. He did make an error in game one, but he has made up for it in aces here in game two. So with two outs, Jeter has contact in nine, power of six, eye of six. He's already, like I said, taken Craig deep. Right-handed normal hitter. Craig sets and delivers to the Yankee captain. Jeter swings and that's his third hit of the game as it goes up the middle. So a two-out single. Jeter at first. He is a threat to run. Speed of six, which is good. Stealing ability of eight, which is very good. Scott Brosha steps to the plate. Right-handed normal hitter. Contact of eight. Power of six. Eye of six. Craig will pitch out of the hold. He sets and delivers to Brocious. Brocious sends that ball to the gap. That's going to get down. Jeter, let's see if he can score all the way from first, and he does. Brocious has a double, and the Yankees take a 6-3 lead. Yankee fans are on their feet and cheering. So some two-out damage there by 98 Yankees. Craig's now up to 65 pitches. He's laboring. He had a good, solid first inning, but he's given up four runs in the second, one run in the third, and one run so far in the bottom of the fourth. Bernie Williams steps the plate. Two for seven in the series, no home runs, no RBIs. 0 for two today. Contact of 10, which is excellent. Power of eight, which is very good, and eye of seven, which is very good. Left-handed normal hitter. Paul O'Neill on deck. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. Craig sets and delivers to Bernie Williams. And that ball is sent in the left field. Here comes the throw to the plate. And he is safe. Williams has himself an RBI. Thomas is throw. Thomas has a cannon for an arm, but it was a little too late. The Yankees are now up 7-3. to three. And the Mets are going to start to get someone up in their bullpen. As their bullpen is horrendous. But... Roger Craig just does not have it today. Um, I want someone who can give him some innings here. I don't want to use Galen Sisko. We used him yesterday. Willard Hunter. He's a lefty. Herb Mofort. He's a righty. All right, we're going to get Hunter the lefty up. 
and Herb Mulford, the righty up. So we're a lefty and a righty up in the pen. All this damage has been done with two outs by the Yankees as their, as their bats have awoken here in game two in a big way. So Bernie Williams is at first. He has speed of five, stealing ability of seven. Again, he is a threat to steal. Paul O'Neill steps to the plate. One for two today. Two for six in this series. No home runs, no RBIs. Contact of nine. Power of seven. Eye of six. Very good hitter, Paul O'Neill. Left-handed spray hitter. Mets infield and outfield straight away. Actually, we're going to have the infield guard the line against the spray hitting O'Neill. Outfield will play straight away in normal. Craig sets and delivers to Paul O'Neill. That ball is sent down to the line. And guarding the lines work as that goes Matia to Neal, out number three. But damage is done once again. We go to the top of the fifth, the 98 Yankees seven, the 62 Mets three. Rod Cannell leads off for the 62 Mets, and let's check our bullpen. Moford is ready. We'll sit him down. And actually, we'll... Hunter is still warming up. We'll keep him up till he's ready and sit him down after. Canell's one for two today with an RBI. One for five in a series with one RBI, which is today. Contact of six, power of three, eye of four. Right-handed pull hitter. He'll be taking well sets and delivers. Strike one. He hits the inside corner with that pitch. Cannell is a little baffled by that call. Steps back in the batter's backs now. He'll be swinging away. Posada flashes a sign. Here's the pitch to Cannell. Cannell swings and sends that ball to the gap. That's going to be two. That's a leadoff double for Rod Cannell. Mets need to take advantage here. Try to get back in this ball game. They're down four, seven to three. Wells has not been stellar at all. The Yankee pitching has not been good in the first two games, to be honest with you. So Canel has speed of seven, stealing ability of eight. He's a very good base runner. Now stepping to the plate, Richie Ashburn. Ashburn's two for six in this series with one RBI, one for two today. He scored ahead of um, Frank Thomas's home run in the first. Contact of eight. Power of three, eye of seven. Good numbers for contact and eye. Below average to poor for power. Ashburn will be taking. Strike one, outside corner. No balls, one strike. Ashburn will be swinging away. Here's the windup and the pitch by Wells. Ashburn sends that ball out into right center. Williams is there. He makes the catch and fires back in towards the cutoff man. No advance by Canell. Yankee fans cheer that effort by their center fielder. Now up the very dangerous Frank J. Williams. One for two today with a home run and two RBIs. In the series, three for five. One home run, five RB, uh, four RBIs. Right-handed pull hitter. Contact to seven. Power of nine, which is excellent. Eye of five. He'll be taking. Well sets and delivers. Strike one. Fastball. Jumps out ahead of. Thomas. No balls. One strike. Thomas to swing away. Rod Cannell is at second. Posada flashes a sign. Here's the pitch to Thomas. And he sends that ball into left field. And here comes a decision here by the 62 Mets. Do you want to signal Rod Cannell to round third base and try to score? The ball is very shallow. Canelo is a very fast runner. Chad Curtis has a great arm. On deck is Felix Mantilla. We are going to say no and hold him. So the Mets have something brewing with one out. Rod Cannell, who's very fast, is at third. And at the other corner base at first, Frank J. Thomas is very slow. At the plate, Felix Mantilla. One for two today. 
two for six in the series with two RBIs. Contact a seven, which is good, very good. Power and eye of five, which is average. He'll be taking. Wells sets and delivers. Strike one. Wells once again jumps out in front. He's getting his, uh, bringing those pitches just a little closer to hit that strike zone. Mets hitters are going to have to adjust to that. 0-1 count. Matia will be swinging away. Here's the pitch to Felix Matia. And that ball is grounded to third. And the only play is the first. Run scores. Mets inch closer, 7-4. to four. Frank J. Thomas advances to second base. So that went Brocious to Martinez. RBI for Matia. So with two outs, the Mets batter is Marv Throneberry. Left-handed batter, normal hitter. Mets first baseman. 0 for 6 in the series, 0 for 2 today. Contact to 5, power of 6, eye of 5. He'll be swinging away. Well, sets and delivers with Throneberry. And Throneberry grounds to Martinez, takes it to the bag himself, inning over. The Mets do score 1, an inch closer. Yankees 7, the Mets 4. We go to the bottom of the 5th. Leading off for the Yankees, Tino Martinez. Martinez is 1 for 2 today, 1 for 5 in the series. Contact to 7, power of 8. Eye of 7, very good offensive batting numbers there. Left-handed normal hitter. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. Craig sets and delivers to Tino Martinez. Ground ball to Neal, over to Throneberry, 1 away. Willard Hunter is ready if we need him. We're going to sit him down. Going to get Herb Moford back up. He'll warm up. Now up to switch hitting catcher Jorge Posada. He's batting left. He's a normal hitter. One for four in the series with an RBI. One for two today. He got his RBI in game number two. Contact to seven. Power of eight. Eye of seven. Very good numbers there. Here's the wind up and the pitch by Roger Craig. That ball is sent out to right field. Christopher comes in and he makes the catch for out number two. So the Mets have had trouble after two outs in this game. Craig would like to get this third out as the grand slam came after two outs by Jeter in the second. And the two runs in the fourth came with two outs. Knobloch is a right-handed normal hitter. Two for four in the series, 0 for one today. Contact and power of six. Eye of seven. Solid offensive numbers there. Mets infield and outfield straight away and normal. Landreth flashes a sign. Craig sets and delivers to Knobloch. And that ball is ripped to the gap. That's going to get down. That's going to be at least a double. Might be three. Nope, Knobloch pulls up at second as Hickman hits the cutoff man. So a two-out double as Roger Craig's two-out woes continues. Tim Rain steps the plate. One for one today. One for five in the series. Contact of eight. Power of four, eye of eight. He's a switch hitter. He's going to bat left-handed. He's a spray hitter. Mets infield will guard the lines against the spray hitting reins. Outfield straight away and normal. Craig is up to 85 pitches. Mulford is still warming up. We're going to get Hunter back up. He's ready. Craig sets and delivers to Reigns. Reigns sends that ball over to Throneberry. And it's an infield hit. He beats it out. Now Black advances the third. They got the ground ball, but Reigns hustling all the way. Beats it out. Chad Curtis steps to the plate. 
0 for 2 today, 6 for 2 in the se 2 for 6 in the series, 1 RBI. Contact of 5, power of 4, eye of 8. Craig wants to get this third out. Mets infield will shift left for the right-handed pull hitter. Reigns is a threat to steal. Scores 7-4, Yankees. Here's the windup and the pitch by Craig. That ball's grounded up the middle and flipped for the force out to second, so that went 6-4, to four, inning over. Craig gets out of that inning. The Yankees do not score. We go to the top of the sixth. The New York Mets of 1962-4. The New York Yankees of 1998-7. Check the Mets bullpen. We're going to sit Hunter down. Mulford's ready. Sit him down. Hickman comes to play. Hickman's 0 for 1 today, 2 for 5 in the series. Against left handed pitching, contact of 6, power of 7, eye of 7. Solid batting numbers there for Hickman. He's going to swing away. Wells sets and delivers. Hickman swings, sends that ball in the left field, and making a fine running catch towards the line is Chad Curtis. One away. Charlie Neal steps to the plate with one out. One for two today, two for six in the series, no RBIs. Right-handed pull hitter. Against Wells, contact of seven. Power of five, eye of six. Again, solid offensive numbers there for Charlie Neal. He'll be swinging away. Posada flashes the sign. Here's the windup and the pitch by Wells. And he strikes him out in the 2-2 count swinging. So there's two outs. Joe Christopher steps to the plate. He'll need a hit or a walk or somehow getting on base to extend this inning. Christopher's 0 for 6 in the series. 0 for 2 today. Contact power. Fives. Eye of 6. Right-handed pull hitter. He's going to swing away. Wells sets and delivers. That ball is popped up. Looks like Brocious is calling it. He makes the catch in foul territory. That's out number three. When you go to the bottom of the sixth, the Yankees have a 7-4 lead over the Mets. Roger Craig still on the mound. 92 pitches he's thrown. He had a clean slate last inning, but he's down 7-4. Derek Jeter, the man of the hour, is at the plate. Right-handed normal hitter. Three for eight in the series. One home run, four RBIs today. The captain's playing a stellar defense, uh, defense at shortstop. And at the plate, he's three for three with one home run, which was a grand slam and four RBIs. Contact of nine. Power of six. Eye of six. Craig's going to try to hit the corners here. He sets and delivers to Jeter. Jeter grounds it to short. That's going to go 6-3. to three. Canel to Throneberry. So Craig was able to get Jeter to chase on that pitch. Grounded it 6-3. to three. Now up Scott Brocious, the Yankee third baseman. 1-3 for three today with an RBI. Contact of 8. Power of 6. Eye of 6. Right-handed normal hitter. Again, Craig's going to see if he can expand the strike zone here by pitching around. He's going to try to hit the corners here. He sets and delivers to Brocious. Brocious grounds it. No, he lines out as he catches it just before it goes to the ground. Fine defensive play by the Mets second baseman, Neal. So there's two away. Up steps the dangerous Bernie Williams. One for three today with an RBI. Three for eight in the series with one RBI. Contact of ten, which is excellent. Power and eye, eight and seven respectively. Very good. Williams is a very good offensive player. Left-handed normal hitter. Again, he's going to see if he can get Jeter. I'm sorry, Williams to extend that strike zone a little bit. And try to pitch around. Craig sets and delivers to Bernie Williams. Williams swings, grounded to Neal. Over to Throneberry. One, two, three inning. Roger Craig to come back with two goose eggs. In the fifth and sixth, we go to the top of the seventh. Leading off for the Mets, Hobie Landreth, their catcher. 
0 for 4 in the series, 0 for 2 today. Contact of 4, power and eye of 5. Landreth will be taking. Here's the pitch. Ball one outside. He'll be swinging away. Well sets and delivers to the Mets catcher. Landreth hits it to Jeter, who goes over to Martinez. One away. Yankee fans applaud that effort there by the captain. Now up, Rod Cannell, the Mets shortstop, who made a horrendous error in the bottom of the second, which led to the bases loaded and two outs. They should have been out of the inning, but the error brought Derek Jeter, the Yankee captain, to the plate. He promptly came up and deposited a ball to dead left for a grand slam. Cannell, 2 for 6 in the series with 1 RBI, is 2 for 3 today. Contact 6, power of 3, eye of 4. Contact number is above average, power is poor, eye is below average. Right-handed pull hitter. Well sets and delivers. Jumps out in front of him. Strike one. Cannell will be swinging away. Here's the pitch to Cannell. And that's ripped to Jeter. Makes a fine play over to Martinez. Out number two. Another cheer goes up by the Yankee faithful here in the Bronx. So with two away, Richie Ashburn steps to play. One for three today. Two for seven in the series with one RBI. Contact against left-handed pitching, 8, power 3, I-7. Those numbers are slightly down from against a right-handed pitcher. The Mets will get a couple of pitchers back up in their pen. Lefty Hunter. He's ready. And Herb Mulford, the righty. He's cold. Ashburn will be swinging away. Wells delivers to Ashburn. Ashburn strikes out on the 0-2 count, inning over. We go to the bottom of the seventh. So, as we go to the seventh inning stretch, Paul O'Neill will lead off for the Yankees. He's one for three today, two for seven in the series. He's a left-handed spray hitter. Wilford re Hunter's ready, Willard Hunter. He's going to come in and face the left-handed O'Neill. Herb Mulford still warming up. Bob G. Miller now gets up in the pen. He's a left-hander for the Mets. He's just trying to piece together some outs here to stay in this game. The Yankees lead the Mets 7-4 here in the bottom of the fourth. So Hunter comes into the game, a left-hander, in 1962, one win, six losses, no saves, he threw 63 innings, walked 34, struck out 40, ERA of 5.57. O'Neill is a left-handed spray hitter, and against left-handers, his contact drops from 9 to 8, power from 7 to 6, high 6 to 5. So there is a benefit to have a left-handed pitcher facing O'Neill. The Mets infield will guard the Lions against the spray hitting O'Neill. Outfield straight away and normal. Hunter against left-handed pitching. Stuff of five, movement of six, control of four. So we won't be doing any type of pitch arounds because he'll probably just walk them. Landreth has a word with Hunter. Now goes back behind the plate. Hunter winds and delivers to O'Neill. O'Neill sends that ball out in the left field, and that is an out. Thomas didn't even have to move as O'Neill went the other way. Mets outfield was played perfectly defensively. One away. Now up the left-handed hitting Tino Martinez. Martinez against left-handers. His numbers dropped from seven to six. 8-6 to six and 6-5. Six to five. So again, benefit here to have the lefty facing the lefty. Let's check our bullpen. Herb Mulford's ready. We're going to sit him down. 
Bob Miller still warming up the left-hander. So with one away, Martinez at the plate, left-handed normal hitter. Mets infield, outfield, straight away in normal. Hunter sets and delivers to Martinez. And he strikes him out in the 0-2 count swinging. So there's two outs. Now up Jorge Posada, and his numbers drop also with a left-handed batter. Pitcher, I mean. His numbers go contact from 7 to 5, power 7 to 6, I 6 to 5. Batting righty. He's a switch hitter, but he's going to bat righty against the left-handed Hunter. Mets infield, outfield, straight away at normal. Hunter sets and delivers to Posada. Strikes him out, swinging on the 0-2 count. 1-2-3 inning, so Hunter, fabulous inning there. Got to remember that. Oh. So Miller's ready. We're going to sit him down. Let's see who we have coming up for the Yankees. Righty, switch hitter, and righty. And now they go to their closer, Mariano Rivera, for a two-inning, six-out save as the Yankees want this game number two to even up this series here, folks. Leading off, the dangerous left fielder for the Mets, Frank J. Thomas. Thomas, four for six in this series. One home run, four RBIs. Two for three today with a homer and two RBIs. Against right-handed pitching, the right-handed pull hitter, contact of seven. Power of eight, eye of five. Rivera, his stuff is five. His movement is outstanding with nine. As he had that that ball that would run in on you and jam you and break your bat. I believe that's the two-seamer, I think. And control a seven, which is very good. So, Posada comes in. I mean, uh, Rivera comes at you. Posada flashes the sign. But before we get to that, Mariano Rivera, in 1998, had three wins, no losses, 36 saves. Walk 17, struck out 36, an ERA of 1.91. Outstanding for the great one, Mariano Rivera. Frank will be swinging away. Rivera sets and delivers to Thomas. And he strikes him out, swinging on the full count. One away. So with one out, Felix Mantilla steps to the plate. One for three today with an RBI. Two for seven in the series with three RBIs. Against right-handed pitching, contact to seven. Power of five, eye of five. He will be swinging away. Mantilla is a right-handed normal hitter. Yankees infield and outfield straight away and normal. Rivera sets and delivers to Mantilla. Mantilla grounds it to Jeter. Who gobbles it up and throws it over to Martinez for out number two. The Yankees four outs away from evening this series as they lead the 62 Mets 7-4. to four. It's been a very exciting game here in the Bronx. Met Yankee fans enjoyed this one much better than the game number one. So with two outs, Marv Throneberry steps to the plate. Against right-handed pitching, his numbers go up. Contact of six. Uh, power of 8. I stays the same at 6. Throneberry will swing away. He is a left-handed normal hitter. Yankees infield and outfield straight away in normal. Posada flashes a sign. Rivera nods his head. Here's the pitch to Throneberry. Grounded to Martinez. Takes it to the bag himself. 1-2-3 inning for the great one, Mariano Rivera. We go to the bottom of the 8th. Willard Hunter steps back out on the mound. He's going to face righty, switch hitter. So he's going to face three righties. Probably should have got Herb Moford up. He's cold. Let's get Miller up. Hunter had a 1 2 3 inning at bottom of the seventh. Landreth visits the mound. He says, I feel good. So we're going we're gonna to go with him against Knobloch here. 
Now black, right-handed, normal hitter. Contact against lefty, six, power six, I seven. Not much changes. In fact, nothing changes. Here's the windup and the pitch to Knobloch. And he sends that ball up the middle for a single. Lead off single. Knobloch is a threat to steal. Good base runner, good speed. Reigns is going to bat right handed. Right handed spray hitter. And that's infield will guard the lines. Reigns 2 for 2 today. No RBI. 2 for 6 in the series with no RBI. Contact is 7 against left handed pitching. Power of 3. I have 7. So contact and I drops by 1 from 8 to 7, respectively. Let's check our bullpen. Miller's ready. He's the left hander. We don't want him ready yet. Sit him down. Herb Moford, the right-handers, almost ready. So we're going to give Hunter one more batter. Landreth flashes a sign. Hunter sets and delivers to Tim Raines. Throw down to second on the steal, and he's safe. Now Black steals second. Yankees have a, another insurance run at second. No outs. Now Black, very good speed. A very good base runner. Reigns is at the plate. Mets infield still guarding the lines. Outfield straight away. That was a strike. So no balls. One strike. Here's the pitch to Tim Reigns Sr. That ball sent to center field. Hickman on the run. He can't get to it. It's going to be a double. And a run scores. It's 8-4. 98 Yankees. Chad Curtis steps to the plate. And that's going to be it for Hunter. So against lefties, he was outstanding. Against righties, not so good. We wanted to see how that would work out. Herb Moford still warming up, but we're bringing him in the game. We get Miller back up. He's a lefty. And we have Bob Moorhead up. He's a righty. Probably not going to need them. Miller's still ready. Sit him down. Don't want to tire him. So Herb Moford steps to the plate with Tim Raines at second. Raines, average speed at this age, at 39, but his stealing ability is 8, which is excellent. Moford comes out of the pen for the Mets in 1962. No wins, one loss. He only threw 15 innings. One base on ball, five strikeouts. His ERA was 7.20. Curtis is a right-handed pull hitter. Mets infield will shift left. Outfield straight away and normal. Moford has stuff of four, which is below average. Movement of six, which is above average. And control of six, which is above average. Curtis against right-handed pitching. Contact of five, average. Power of four, below average. Eye of eight, which is very good. Here's the windup and the pitch to Curtis. That ball is grounded to Neal, who throws the Throneberry. One away. Reigns advances to third with one out. Yankees are leading 8-4 to four and stepping to the plate. 3-4, for four, one home run, and it was a grand slam with four RBIs as the captain, Derek Jeter. Odds are he's going to be the player of the game for his outstanding offense, but also his tremendous defense at short today. The captain, contact of nine, power of six, eye of six. On deck is Brocious. Mets are down four. Brocious is contact numbers eight. 6-6. Six, six. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna walk Jeter. Four straight pitches put him on first. Brocious comes to the plate. We set up the double play. Uh, we're gonna move our infield to double play depth. 
Brocious is a right-handed normal hitter, one for four today with an RBI, one for eight in the series with one RBI, contact of eight, power and eye of six. Mets infield losing a double play depth, outfield straight away in normal. Mulford sets and delivers to Brocious. Grounder, no, it gets through! In the left field, Rain scores from third. Jeter advances to second RBI single for Brocious. Yankees have blown this game open as they now have a five-run lead, 9-4 to four here in the bottom of the eighth. Bernie Williams, a switch hitter, steps to the plate. And let's check out our Met bullpen. Let's see, let's get Miller back up. I don't know if we're going to waste anyone else. Miller's ready. You know what? Let's go with Miller. We're going to go with Miller. Left-handers coming in. Moorhead still warming up. These bullpen pitchers for the Mets, not only do they stink, but they won't warm up slow as dirt. So Bob Miller steps to the plate, switching Bernie Williams at that right-handed, so his numbers drop slightly. So instead of a 10 at contact, he goes for 10-9. Power drops from 8-7, to seven, I-7-6, seven to six, which are still outstanding numbers there. Grosh is at first, speed of 6, stealing ability of 8, which is good. Cheater the same thing at second. Speed of six, stealing ability of eight. There's one out. Williams is a right-handed normal hitter. Mets will switch to double play depth. Miller has stuff of four against right-handed batters. Movement and control of six and five, respectively. He sets and delivers to Bernie Williams. And he walked him on the full count. Bases loaded for Paul O'Neill. And Miller in 1962 was two wins, two losses, one save, pitched 20 in a third innings, walked eight, struck out eight, ERA of 7.08. This could get even uglier quite quickly. So, bases are loaded. O'Neill is a spray hitter. His numbers drop against the left-handed Miller. Contact goes from 9 to 8, power from 7 to 6, I from 6 to 5. Mets will guard the lines on the spray hitting O'Neill. 1 for 4 today, 2 for 8 in the series, no homers, no RBI. Landrick flashes a sign, Miller sets and delivers to O'Neill. And he strikes him out for out number 2. Gets him swinging on the 0 2 count. Now Tino Martinez. Left-handed first baseman, normal hitter, one for four today, one for seven in the series, no home runs, no RBIs. Against left-handed pitching, his numbers also drop. Contact goes from seven to six, power goes from eight to six, eye goes from six to five. So there's two outs. That's infield, outfield, straight away and normal. Bases are loaded. Jeter at third. Grocious at second. Williams at first. The line and the pitch by Miller. And it gets away. A run will score. It's now 10 to 4. As I believe that was a wild pitch. So Jeter scores from third, Grocious advances to third, and Williams advances to second. Two balls, two strikes on Tino Martinez. Mets infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. Here's the pitch by Miller. Ground ball to throw, and Barry Miller covering first, inning over. But the Yankees tack on three more runs and have blown this game wide open, 10-4. to four. They now have a six-run lead on the 1962 Mets. The right-handed pitcher in the Mets bullpen, Bob Moorhead, is now finally ready. Good for you, Bob. Go sit down. So Mariano Rivera comes out with a huge cushion here in the top of the ninth. He got the Mets 1-2-3 in the top of the eighth. The Yankees are three outs away from tying this series up at one game apiece. Leading off and trying to get something started for the Mets, their center fielder, Jim L. Hickman.
0 for 2 today, 2 for 6 in the series, no home runs, no RBIs. Against right-handed pitching, contact to 6, power and eye, I'm sorry, contact to 5, power and eye of 6. Rivera throws strikes. Hickman will be swinging away. He is a right-handed normal hitter. Yankees outfield, infield, straightaway and normal. Rivera sets and delivers. Hickman pops that ball up. Who's going to get it? Knobloch catches the pop-up, one away. So with one out, Charlie Neal steps to the plate. Mets second baseman. One for three today, two for seven in the series. No home runs, no RBIs. He did have a triple today. He's a pull hitter. Yankees infield, outfield, straightaway and normal. Against Mo Rivera, contact of six, power of five, eye of six. He'll be swinging away against Mo Rivera. Asada flashes the sign. Rivera de delivers the pitch to Neal. That ball is grounded. Brocious gobbles it up, throws it to Martinez. Two away. The Yankee fans are on their feet and clapping. As the Yankees are one out away from evening the series at one game apiece. Last hope for the Mets. Joe Christopher, the right fielder who gunned Jeter out at the plate in the bottom of the first for the third and final out. That was probably the last good moment for the Mets. <laughs> As the rest of the game has not gone so well for the 62 Mets. Christopher is a right-handed pull hitter. 0 for 7 in the series, 0 for 3 today against Mo Rivera. Contact of 5, power of 5, eye of 6. Here's the windup and the pitch by Mo Rivera. Grounder to Cheater. Over to Martinez. Game over. How appropriate. The last out is 6-3. to three. Cheater to Martinez. The 1998 Yankees come back with a vengeance and take game two, 10 to 4 over the 1962 Mets. So in game two, Goliath slays David. Let's quickly go to the box score here. Let's bring that up for you. Bear with me a moment as I go back to OBS and bring up a new window. Hit OK. There's the box score. Hit OK. And that should pop up in a moment. And there it is. So let's quickly go over the box score. I believe the player of the game is going to be Derek Jeter. Player of the game, Derek Jeter. And I'll tell you why. Derek Jeter, the leadoff hitter and Yankee captain, the shortstop, played stellar defense. He went three for four today, scored three runs, had four RBIs, walked once. He had a home run, which was a grand slam, and that's why he's player of the game. The New York, the New York Yankees of 1990, New York 1998 Yankees relied on hitting of shortstop Derek Jeter to get by the New York 1962 Mets 10 to four in Game Two of this series today. For the game, Jeter went three for four with a home run, two singles, and a walk while scoring three runs and driving in four. The clubs are now tied one game apiece. Jeter had a big at bat with two outs in the bottom of the second, and the chance that Jeter got was because of the error by the Met shortstop, Cannell. He should have been out of the inning. Uh, with his team down 3 nothing, the shortstop hit a grand slam home run to put the New York 1998 ahead. I think we all put in a good day's work, said Jeter. Game 3 is scheduled for Sunday, October 4th, 1998 at the Polo Grounds. Slated to start are Andy Pettit for the Yankees and Jay Hook for the Mets. So, I'll quickly... Go through the Mets. Uh, Mets had 34 at-bats, 4 runs, 7 hits, 4 RBIs, walked once, struck out 6, left 11 men on base. Cannell, who made that crucial error in the bottom of the second, which led to the Jeter Grand Slam, actually had a pretty good day at the plate. 2 for 4, scored 1 run, 1 RBI. Ashburn was 1 for 4, scored a run. 
Thomas was two for four with a run scored, two RBIs, and he had a home run. He struck out once. Uh, Ashburn also struck out once. Mantilla, Mets third baseman, was one for four with an RBI. Thronberry 0 for 4, Hickman 0 for 3, Neal 1 for 4, that was a triple, he scored a run, Christopher 0 for 4, and Landreth the catcher 0 for 3. For the Yankees, as we said, Jeter player of the game, 3 for 4, 3 runs, three R 4 RBIs, 1 walk, Brocious 2 for 5, 1 run scored, 2 RBIs, uh, Bernie Williams, one for four, one RBI, one walk, one strikeout. O'Neill, one for five, he K'd twice. Martinez, one for five, scored a run. Posada, the catcher, one for four with an RBI. Knobloch, who's hitting 666 in this series, was two for three, scored two runs. Reigns, the DH, was three for three, one RBI, two runs scored. He also walked once. Curtis, the left fielder, scored a run. I think he got on by a oh, hit by pitch, I believe, or fielder's choice. Um, was 0 for 4. Let's go to the pitching numbers quickly before we bid you an adieu. Roger Craig for the New York Mets took the loss. Went six innings, gave up 11 hits, seven runs, three earned. <laughs> Only three earned. Uh... One base on ball, struck out two, gave up a home run through 98 pitches, 60 of them for strikes. His ERA is 4.50 in the series. Willard Hunter came in, pitched an inning, two hits, two runs, both earned, struck out two uh, through 16 pitches. All the pitches were strikes. His ERA is 18. Against lefties, he was very good, so we got to remember that for upcoming games. Uh, Right-hander came in after that, Herb Moford. He pitched a third of an inning, one hit, one run. It was earned, walked one. Threw six pitches, four of them for strikes. He's awful. We finished off with Bob Miller, the left-hander, who went two-thirds of an inning, walked one, struck out one. Fifteen pitches, nine of them for strikes, gave up no runs. The winning pitcher was a very shaky David Wells. He pitched seven innings, seven hits. Four runs, all earned, walked run, walked one, excuse me, struck out five, gave up a home run through 123 pitches, 80 of them for strikes. His ERA is 5.14. Mariano Rivera pitched the final two innings to get a six-out save to even the series up. And he didn't give up any hits, didn't give up any runs, didn't walk anyone, struck out one through 26 pitches. 17 of them were for strikes. So this is Al Red Sox fan saying thank you for watching. As the 1998 New York Yankees even up the series against the 1962 New York Mets. In game two, the Yankees are victorious 10-4. Player of the game, Derek Jeter, the captain. Health and happiness. God bless Remember, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the share button, subscribe. But most of all, come back for game number three at the Polo Ground. It's Al Red Sox fan saying thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.